topic. And this is where the heart of CEP processing actually takes place. In order to accomplish CEP, you need two things. You need an inverted fact database, and you need some kind of an inference engine that's actually going to be able to take these events and aggregate them in some intelligent manner or drop some events. Um, and then obviously the aggregated event, the actual complex event, was propagated out again through messaging infrastructure to GMS, uh, to backend systems, you know, things like forecast systems, uh, back office systems, and to portfolio management and investment policy statements, so client facing systems. So okay, taking all of this fine grained stuff, be able to analyze it, aggregate it, calculate it, and publish a coherent business event out to the outside world which is you know, pretty difficult to do if you don't have that infrastructure in place. Um, so to, to go a little bit deeper into this, uh, into this setup, uh, a lot of the events were stored in the JBoss cache. Uh, we, that's why we leveraged the, the property change listener feature of JBoss rules, where as, a, as an event arrives, the rules were actually fired off depending on uh, if, if it meets certain criteria. So the rules were applied every time a change in any of these areas were, uh, were triggered. So essentially we would recalculate the fees if, if necessary uh, and be able to publish it out to the real world. CEP DSL, this is the domain specific language, was where analysts, you know, after the fact, after the system was implemented, would be able to actually change the rules because the rules were highly complex. They would be able to change the rules and adjust the rules uh, based on the new you know, the new business policies that the company has. Okay. Questions on this? The external system is real time or that? Uh, the question was if the external systems were real time. So most of them were real time because they were implementing via databases. For instance, IMS and MS SQL Server will ever trigger technology or exit technology to get the real time events. Some of the things like Medavanti, which is a well-known banking system, was still batched. They so produce batch events, but again, it prepares you architecturally prepares you for a paradigm where it's all event-driven. So in real world, you will rarely get that everything that's uh, that's a, you know real time. But at least you can kind of shoot for that. Now here's, a, here's an example of really CEP domain-specific language. This is what the rules look like. Um, again, when you dive in deeper into CEP, it has to have constructs for time definition, time windows. It has to have constructs that are SQL-like to be able to aggregate the data. Uh, so again, JBoss rules allow us to author uh, domain-specific language that the developers and actually analysts use to define new rules and new events. So you see it's, it's a combination of uh, SQL-like, select average from stream, and it has two important things. SQL-like expression and as well as uh, time range because you want to be able to define windows on your events. Uh, that, that's another thing that's highly, highly important. Is um, is more just more example of that. Okay, so so what what was the result of being able to uh, kind of get data, receive data real time, and aggregate the data and kind of you know fire it off real time? Well, first of all, we were able to to get the customer up to minute company revenue visibility for the management to, for them to make uh, real time decisions, so they understood how much is being earned in fees and make, uh, you know, make financial decisions accordingly. Um, and the other thing was really they gain about $5 million in revenue per year in, in, in addition, I wouldn't say additional revenue, but it's the revenue that they were losing due to uh, mainframe system not being able to fire off all the, all the proper rules. So they got visibility into rules, they got management of the rules kind of more visible to them. A mainframe programmer doesn't, didn't have to do it anymore. Uh, so they were able to fine tune these uh, uh, fees rules to, uh, you know, earn them another five million dollars per year. Uh, uh, the other thing is they actually sunset uh, their legacy fees application, which you would expect. Now the interesting thing is that once the platform, the CEP platform, was in place, they were able to leverage the same platform for fraud monitoring and tax slot, which are the other two problems that they were facing, addressing kind of in a batch mode. Uh, they were able to detect client uh, fraud. Uh, just by, you know, for an example, if somebody's doing a $20 million wire out of the bank and at the same time tries to uh, commit a trade, you know, they were, they were able to, to catch kind of these things happening in correlation versus, you know, being able to discover it after the fact in, in their old batch world. Um, 